All right, so we're going to, as uh, we told you guys last week or two weeks ago, like on the first day, um, we're going to be working in these projects in all these. Uh, actually, it's going to be roughly five stations. Three stations are the one that we're going to rotate between the vertical mill, the lathe, and welding. And then when you get the, the group that's going to be off the lathe is going to do an exercise on uh, 3D printing. So everybody's going to have the chance to actually have that exercise just because lathe goes faster than the other stations. And, uh, uh, and then at the end, everybody's going to do an exercise on the CNC router. So like it's going to be a total of five stations. But the, for two of the stations, which is the vertical mill and the lathe, we're going to provide you guys with uh, a mechanical drawing. And maybe a mechanical drawing, like that, that's how we're going to be building your pieces, your parts. And your grade has a relation to your the work that you do with your parts, right? So um, we have uh, dimensions and tolerances for everything. And then you guys are going to be deducted points if you fall outside of the dimension, right? So if you listen and you be careful, the same as the, the professor is going to be telling you to do, then you get full points, you know? So the, so like a, this is the main idea for this. So like, a, but like today I only going to present you, you, you guys with a couple of things that uh, it's going to be important in. So like the lecture is actually what's going to be the most important things for everybody to know. So there's been time here, right? But the, otherwise we just would be in the lab. Um, so for example, um, See, the, can anybody tell me? So, uh, any information that you get from that number? 1.00. That number tells you a lot of stuff. I want to see how much you can see out of that. You can find the tolerance. How many? The tolerance that you have with them, point zero is going to be using the uh, no, no, but this, but this is the is is the is the dimension. Only this number, not that. <laughs> Does anybody know? Tells you that the block is one inch. Yeah, so like tell tells you that the block is one inch. What else? You can tell how precise the uh, measurement tool was, but. He can tell you exactly what you measure with. So like a, if you measured this with a ruler, you wouldn't get to this level of precision. Right? So the so like a, the number itself tells you like a, how you should be measuring. Uh, and I have another uh, detail. So uh, what is this number? No. Anybody? The tolerance that's at like added on, like there's the tolerance at the bottom there, but that's tolerance that's added basically to that tolerance that's like specific to that in order to, you know, it's not it's like a, actually that's like a, something that like a, after we started teaching this class, we uh, we actually noticed that like a, there was this uh, kind of misunderstanding between the numbers because they look the same. This is actually what everybody would write as as a tolerance. You know, you can be like a 
one inch plus or minus like uh, 20, 20 000, you know. But the idea is this is actually the error from the measurement. So like, uh, does anybody know what the er error of the measurement is? It's not that I made a mistake. It's the word from the process beyond to like certain value. So for every tool, let's say I'm gonna measure this with uh, any measuring tool. So my my ticks for measurement are like this. And then it's right there. And the next one will be here. So the the error is like a What's the difference between two people that are doing the correct measurement that they can actually tell that one number is right and the other person is going to tell that the other number is right? I know that's kind of weird. Like how, how come two people can be right and the number should be different, right? All right, so that's uh, so uh, that measurement right there is uh, if you're measuring with a vernier caliper, <laughs> right? So I can show you here. Uh, has anybody used one of these before? Long time ago? Usually like a, students don't like this one. It's kind of difficult, I guess. But, all right, let's see if I can get this. Uh, and escape. All right, maybe a lot of me again. Ah, I don't want to turn me off. Go back. More settings. What is settings? All right. So let's see who can tell me how this works. All right. Who wants to tell me how to read this? Anybody that used it before? So it's just this measuring something, right? So. Art? All right. You say it's the measurements from, so the ball, there's numbers on the top and bottom. And then if you're looking at like the bottom set of numbers, I mean like the, so there's there's two sets of two sets of numbers. If you look yeah. at the bottom, yes, those yeah, you would first read the you know, number that's highest, and then the number that's second highest, and then the number that's on the bottom, I think. It's been a while since I used one that wasn't digital. Yeah. So like a, yeah, so like you're you're going in the right direction. So first we have to look at when does the zero start? All right, so the zero starts right here. So like that. So if we see, uh, let's see, between one inch and two inches. So there, so there's one inch here, right? All right, I'm gonna lie to you guys. So this is zero point two inches, and then another. So like this, each gap of this is zero point two inches, right? 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, one inch, right? Okay, so how much does each of these ones is worth? It's half of this one, right? <coughs> so this is 0 0.1 inch, right? How much each of this one would worth?
I get one of these and I divide by one, two, three, four. Right? So each of these ticks is 0 0.025. Right? I get the 0 0.1 and divide by four. Good. So my zero starts on the 0 0.8. My zero starts on the 0 0.8 plus one of these ones. How much is one of these ones? 0 0.1. Plus one of the little ones there. <coughs> and then the thing is after. Is the thing after or before? Or is where right on top? This one. Uh, which one? This number, this this tick here and this one. Is it right over the top, to the right, or to the left? Because like right over the top has to be right over the top. Like it's at the point. Yeah. Okay. So you get it. So you can read it up. But like, uh, let's say. Okay. So let's add. So this this are, is our starting point, right? Now, to make it even more complicated, but that's the max, right? Now to make it even more complicated. I'm going to erase this just so there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff for you guys to pay attention to. Now we have to match the bottom one and the top one for all of these ones and see which one lines up perfectly. So, for example, so the way that I see, like uh, usually, usually the way that I read this is like this. You have one that goes like this, and then they start getting closer, and then they go like this, and then see like how this one is clearly to the left, and then this one is getting closer, and then this one is kind of right on the top. This one is kind of right on top. This one is clearly that way. This one is clearly that way. And this one is clearly that way, right? So we have to pick one of these two. Now we gotta pick sides. You know? Somebody's gonna say this one. Some people are gonna say that one. The measurement error is there. So both people are correct. Right, so like that's why you you have that this measurement here, which not the tolerance, right? You can clearly see that this is not the tolerance, right? So this is for every measurement for every tool, you have this here. Right, same tool. Two people are doing a correct measurement, and the number is different. Both are right. So the tolerance always have to be larger than the error of the of the measurement tool. Yeah, so I got the 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 error has a relation to the smallest measurement that you can get. So usually a, a guy would say the error is actually half of the smallest scale. Why? Because if you say this one. Plus or minus this number is going to take you there and it take you here. You say this number, you're correct. If it's here, it, it also get you covered, you know? But that's why it's plus or minus. Because you don't know to which side the guy made a mistake. Or red. Well, like does the, uh, the tolerance on the schematic have to be larger than the error that you're measuring? Yes. So I, yeah, if that was part of your question, yes. Like uh, for example, if my if my measurement error 
is actually larger than the tolerance. Like uh, I can be off and technically uh, come in, you know, like it's uh, so like uh, it, there's a uh, there's a direct direct relation to that. All right, so. And so like, can you guys see how the how this works? And uh, so like for anything in the whole school or everywhere, the, w the way that I see everything that we teach you guys, it should be common sense. After I, 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 I line this up to you, it's a common sense that this is the reason, right? Like, I, it, like I, if you learn something because somebody's actually trying to make it memorize, that's not a very good way of learning, you know? 20 years from now, you're not going to remember today. But 20 years from now, if you give a real, a good thought into it, you're going to get the same. So like everything has to make sense, you know, like a, a, everything has to be common sense. It's just like some philosophy, some of, some of my philosophy. So like a, the. That's good. All righty. So where is the where is the tolerance then? Common sense that you have plus the chart down one. Yeah. So usually all the or all the all the mechanical drawings, they're gonna have what they call a tolerance block. Which says, if I zoom in here, it would say, if my number is something dot, uh, and has point X, which has like one, one decimal unit, then it's gonna be plus or minus 0 0.1. If it has something in two decimals, plus or minus something. See, that's what's written here. And he has an angle, he has like a bunch of information here. That's the standard. Unless I point out right on the. So this one. So. Either. So actually, you guys are correct. Like I can put down like a, I'll put this one here like a, to mess you guys up. But like a, I think he put that one there because that one is like a, for that one specific one. That that's the one that what he wanted for the, for the, uh, for the tolerance. So like this is actually the, the tolerance for this one. So you guys were correct from the beginning. But like a, I wanted to actually explain the measurement here. Short, yes. All right. So now we have a good idea of like a, what's the tolerance and what's the and what's measurement here, and both are not the same. Even though usually you write them the same way, right? So um, if we talk about tolerance, like let's say, um, let's see how I'm going to put this in. Um, All right. Usually this is actually what would throw people off the most. I have a hole and I have a pin. Right? Let's say this one. Is there any? All right, this one. 0 0.35. As the one inch. And then the block says point XX is plus or minus 0 0.01. 
right? So what does that mean? Anybody? The bottom like, like one inch or yeah, yeah, this is one inch. And this is what you can see on your on your on your on your on your tolerance block. Or uh, so your measurement on the on the diagram has uh, two significant digits past the decimal point, then you're going to use your tolerance of plus or minus one hundred because it, it goes down to whatever your most um, most precise significant digit is. So like uh so like when you're doing it, what does it mean? But you, you can continue. Oh yeah, you can go. You can go to plus point oh one or minus point oh nine. So that means if you put this there, if the guy gives you something that's one point zero one or zero point nine nine, your functionality shouldn't like it should actually impact on the functionality of of your thing. Right. Okay. Clear, right? All right. I got I have a key in the hole. What number do we do want to put here? This has to fit in there. One. One? Okay. You want to put like any specific uh tolerance there? Or do you want to just follow the same one? What is it? Hunter? Would you just add the tolerance, like add a slightly weaker tolerance than the uh, tolerance on the egg? So this actually, it's it's kind of like a... But you, you just use the same tolerance. So like, a, okay. Let's, let, let's try to go there. So this can be, so these are two different guys in two different parts of your process. This guy makes this one, zero, and this guy makes this one. Is he gonna fit? No. So like that, it kind of throws you off once you have actually mating parts. Right, so that's when you actually need more precision or, or less precision because precision has a cost, right? You need like a guy to be really paying attention to actually get like a, imagine you say I need something that's this. Why would somebody want that? Either because like each each decimal here has a huge cost in time or process, right? So when you design something, you have to have this in mind, which is actually difficult to picture. Unless you actually try to make both and put it together and then it doesn't work and you'll say, ah, now I know. So actually, this is one of the reasons why we have this class, you know, so you guys really make things that don't go together and then now you have, now you, you're going to remember 20 years from now and say, you know what, I've done that before, 20 years ago, you know. So like, uh, so you have to actually pay attention to what we leave as a tolerance because the tolerance tells you what is allowed. And this, all this information that's here, it's a contract. I give this to my, to my supplier, he gives this to me, he doesn't pick, it's not his fault. It's actually my fault, I, I rolled the wrong thing. So I ordered the wrong part, you know? Good. So if you need any specific tolerance, you just add it right there, right on the measurement. You have to be careful with the mating parts, just because like a, it's gonna like a, it can show you off like that. So like a how. So how do you would you do this then? Or uh, go one point zero two, so one point zero zero. I don't know that comes a problem if you had a piece that was like, let's say your piece of the hole it came out at 1.03, that was almost 0.99, and that comes a problem. So I can actually, so like a, that's like a where the engineer has to decide, like a, for example, 
Now, the question is, if, if this is a key and that's a keyhole, technically this is what, you're, what you want to get, right? How much, how much distance do you want to get between them, if any? So like, uh, so like the numbers that are going to add here and there is actually going to have a relation to your max allowance there in that like uh, dimension. Would you make tolerance have of the pseudo-petting half of the pegs tolerance? I wouldn't actually have them in the same dimension. I wouldn't have one and one. Okay, so one and one it doesn't go together. You know, you'd have to go like a 0 0.95 plus or minus 0, 0 0.0 something, two. And then that one's going to be zero, actually, one plus or minus 0 0.02. And then this guy can go like a from 0 0.97 to 0 0.93, and that guy can go from uh, 0 0.98 to 1.02. You know, there's no, then it's always going to go in if that's the case. You know? mm -hmm. Good, easy. All right, now I'm going to troll. Another curveball on you guys. Who's the who plays a baseball here? Baseball first. All right. Who wants to tell me when this is not gonna work? But it's a, it's in there. It's somewhere in there. So like that. When you look at, at a mechanical drawing, it has a lot of stuff that's in there that's important, but like we never pay attention to it. So every single symbol, every single symbol that we have there has a meaning. The thing is, usually we don't know what they are. But like uh, you guys are gonna be engineers, so I don't know to what level and need what. But like uh all this is actually a different information. So the guy that's reading it has to know all the information that's there, right? So let's say when the guy measured this, the quality measurement guy, when he measured this, how did he measure? Imagine like he went there. He, uh, so to measure that, let's say we would use the, the indoor jaw, the the inside jaws from the from the vernier caliper there. But this is what we use to actually measure the inside diameter. See? All right. The guy measured it right there. 0 0.98. Are you happy? So what if your thing is actually exactly like I'm, I drew? It's 0 0.98 right there. What about this? Okay, so that's why I like radius instead of some other system. You have to specify how much it, the your circle or your radius can be off. Right? Another one is like a, sometimes the top is round, but the middle is actually messed up. Sometimes the guy measure it, and this is actually, it looks like a perfect circle, but it's actually like this, which is the measurement for the specification for roughness. You know, you measure it here because the jaw, when the jaw sits, it sits right in there. 
But actually, if you measure in a different way, then it's going to get something different, right? So all this is going to come in on this other block, on this other uh, square blocks. See this one, that one, not roughness because we're not actually uh, doing any quality check for roughness of this one, right? But like, uh, we just wanted to know that these things exist. And then like, uh, we're gonna have some of them, uh, so, so, so you guys can get used to it. So, again, so you guys are gonna be testing it. For example, let's see. Say everything is common sense, right? That's what I said. If you think hard, you're gonna know what it is, right? All right. Can anybody tell me what this one means? I bet that I never said it before. So this one is like this. You have this, and then you have just so like the you guys can see on the video, you know, 30 years from today, you're gonna look back and say, Oh, I love that thing. So that's what it happened. Would it be <clears throat> from side to side? It would have to be parallel by 0 0.003. Why why from side to side? I think what he's saying is like if you were to say compare the measurement at the top and compare the measurement at the bottom. The difference could only be in that tolerance. But like, why do you know that you're t you're talking about the other side? Simple. See, like this. What surface A? Uh, See. Oh yeah. Oh, it goes. Does it mean like if you were on surface A that they, they yeah. need more than that, that off? So this is the block, right? This is the exact same block here from the drawing. So this is the exact thing that you guys are gonna do. This was what you guys are gonna follow. This one is surface A. So if I put the surface A on what we call a flat block which is that block right there. This is precision ground to be flat, right? And I tried to measure this right here. If I move this around, then my needle can move, right? So we have a dial gauge, Right, so the word the, the way that the dial gauge works is if I I think it's, you guys can see it if if I push it up, see how my needle changes. So we would put it here. Oops, push it up a little bit. So I have to see it here, actually, sorry. Sorry about it. Until it touches. Right. If this system that I have here works, that would be great. Almost. Is it upside down or just me? <laughs> but again, I, I guess you guys can see it, right? <laughs> All right. So I have it right there. And by just moving the block, guess what? My needle shouldn't move. I'm just like a traveling the block. So now you can tell like a, 
so like I can actually go here. So the dial the way that works is like you you can turn the back. So right now I have my needle sitting at zero. How do I block my? So I'm gonna say that it's around zero, it's around zero. You get some peaks there. But the max that it goes is to about right there. So that's uh that's uh five ten thousands. So the max that it moves it's so the so H tick here. Is five ten thousandths of an inch. The max that he moved was this. So the max that he moved was Are we within the spec or not? Oof. Wrong way. Yeah. Good. It should be straightforward, right? So this is one. So like a, this is this is uh, parallelism. So uh, there's a way that you, it's like a, the more you try to um, the more you try to constrain your measurement, the more expensive it is. Right. If I say if I tell a guy that I need to actually make these two sides parallel, it's actually more expensive than if I don't say anything. Right? Because the guy has to guarantee that those two sides are going to be parallel. Right? All right. So sometimes um imagine like a let's see, let's see. Imagine um, this thing is going to actually fit on something like this. And it has to fit flat. So this two, once it sits, it has to sit flat. A guy could say, you know, I could have these two sides parallel, and that would make that side to be flat, right? But I could just come in and say, I don't care about this side. This side could be like this. By a little bit, because it's already covered by what? Sorry, there's stuff drawn here. It's already covered by this one at some point, right? Because this one can be two inches plus or minus what? 0 0.1. So at some point, this guy is also covered by that. If I don't need this guy to be flat or parallel, I wouldn't just add the parallelism there. I'll, I'll just add what they call the flatness. Right? So flatness, parallelism, let's see, um, concentric, and many other of the features. You can just like a, you say like a, this is what I need. And then you just like a try to constrain your your uh, drawing, so like you get exactly what you want to get, because everything here is actually a binding contract, you know, just written in a different way. So another thing that I, that I want to point out is 
sometimes like uh, when you add something like this here, uh, remove all burrs and sharp edges. The guy's gonna say, come on, like you don't have to write that like I'm not done, you know? But unless you write the details like this, that's even like a clear, you know, nobody would actually send like a poor job. But if you don't write it there, the guy can't send without doing that work and then and still be like you wouldn't be able to sue the guy. You know, it's still like I meet the requirements because it's, it's it's not written anywhere that you have to divert the piece unless you have it there. So like everything that you want, like a finish. But it's, it's like a so so these are dimension related. Right. But like, uh, let's say I want to talk about finish. I want to talk about uh, some code that this part has to follow. You know, so like uh, then you just have to write everything on the beginning before. Cool. So the the only thing here that's kind of like a different than all this that that that, that I'm talking about so far is this one. So that one is I'm gonna make a hole so I can tap a three quarter ten unified course tread there. Right. So when we are actually working on the piece. So when you're working on the piece, the hole that we have to make is a hole that's big enough. So when I come in with my tap to cut the treads, it's going to work. You know, so it has some requirements. So this one, it's not a dimension. This one is called a specification. Okay. Do you have to subtract that from the radius of the circle? Like subtract. Is do you follow your print perfectly or like the paper perfectly, or do you have to subtract that number from the radius too? So like uh or add. Did you see that like uh this one never had the the size of the hole? Right? What does he have? Yeah, that's a good one. Let's talk about this one. So what's the, spe the specification that he has for the hole where we're going to put a three quarter ten tread there? You have to be able to tap that. No, like, no, what's the specification that they have here? No, the, the dimension that's locked in. There's a center point that you have to get. Yeah, he he is not saying these from here to here. He has this distance. This is not what he's saying, right? What he's saying is the very center, the very center has to be one inch, one inch. Can you see A, B, C? Otherwise, this F, C there. But you see, like how he actually positioned the hole? Because if you say, this is my corner, you know, 
it's actually different than it's like a right now when he did this. He gave this the target. So this is the max target. You can't miss the target, right? But like a, if you give this, so like the, another way of doing the same thing is giving this one plus the diameter. But I don't know why it has a C there. Terrico is the one that like I put it there. Because like a C is actually the back. See? The hole is actually going like this. Right? But like a, if you give the sides plus the, the plus, plus the diameter, I could actually be off the most here. Let's say plus or minus something. So I'm gonna make a mistake for the to make it smaller, and I'm gonna make a mistake to make it smaller here, and I'm gonna make a mistake to make this smaller. You know what I mean? So like that, you actually there's you you're gonna mess up in more dimensions than if you just like uh, tell them where where the target is. It's kind of difficult to picture, but how do you know how big to cut the hole? I don't see measurements for the hole. I see like I can see where the center is, but I don't know how big. You can cut it. So like uh, SM, S, ASME tells you like that. Uh, to cut a two quarter ten, you should use a specific drill bit and then tap in a specific way. Because the ASME is actually what actually regulates everything based on uh, mechanical stuff. So he's going to say, if I have a treads that are like this, So I expect my treads to hold, let's say, 300 pounds, which is not true. But let's say I expect this thread to hold 300 pounds. So what if I make it like this? It's going to hold less. So then, like, uh, that's what, like, uh, well, what do you guys would have to cover? You know, between you're going to go in the books and say, you know, I have to follow this one, specific this one, based on this manual. And then there's a, so like, uh, each industry does a different, like, my, my use even a different pattern. All right. So like I used to work in the oil field, and in the oil field, everything is should be military grade. Why? If you if you do something that fails, and you you are like a twenty thousand foot with your equipment inside of the well, it takes you three days to pull it out and three days to put it where it was. So like that, that's a six days of downtime that your company is paying the client. Or not being able to work. So instead of the client being paying you for the work, you have to pay them back. So usually they want to work at a like very high quality. So everything's like a military grade. So then that's when you guys are gonna be so like if if the restrictions here are not that tight, you choose a tight one if you need. The problem is cost goes up, right? For somebody to cut these trends better. You'd have to say, you know, I'll charge more money to put those tracks, you know. If it has to be that precise, you know, I'll just charge more. But that's like a pretty much everything that we wanted to cover in this class, which was uh, mechanical drawing.
So on the mechanical drawing, everything that's on the drawing means something. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there, right? So we have the the only one that we, that we don't have here is the measurement here, right? But we have we talk about the dimension itself, the tools, the Dimension, tools, what else did we talk about? We talk about the tolerances. And uh, Cara pointed out like correctly that like uh, the tolerance has to has to has a relation to to like uh, what what measurement tool you can use to, right? Otherwise, if the error from the measurement tool is too big, then they, then and it goes beyond the tolerance, then it doesn't work, right? And then we need like a quality tools. Yeah, so this is what we wanted to cover with this class. Uh, does anybody have any questions? So the the uh, with the 3D printer and welding and the CNC, we're gonna we're not gonna be looking at this. Yeah, just with the with the uh, project for the for the uh, vertical mill and the length. So um, for the for the lay or uh, for the CNC router, the project's gonna be cutting wood. So we're going to teach you guys how to uh, draw on FreeCAD and transfer that like uh, using the path uh, workbench to uh, the G code that's going to work on the CNC machine. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's a 2x, a 3x, or a 5x CNC. It's always the same process. They all use G code just like the 3D printer does. Uh, and it doesn't matter if we're using FreeCAD or using like another tool from Autodesk or something like that. It's always the buttons are in different places, but like the idea is the same, right? So the so but like in class, we're not going to spend a lot of time drawing because not a, it is it's not a CAD class. Like we're just going to say, everybody just make a block with a profile. Block with a profile that means. So let's make a block that has a profile. That means I'm going to cut this around, which is the profile. And then it has and there's going to be an area there's that's not going to be cut all the way through. There's going to be a pocket. Why? Because it's two different things to cut a profile and to cut a pocket, right? So if you guys want to take the time to do something that you want to do, you guys can draw something and then bring to us. We're going to say, yeah, we can cut that one. And then when it comes time to do the project of the CNC, then we do whatever you want to do, right? As long as not today, you know. But the yeah, so like uh, we're just gonna grab a piece of wood there, and you guys are gonna cut stuff. Like uh, usually people, if if you don't think that true beforehand, everybody ends up with a, a block like this because we're not gonna spend time trying to figure this out. But some people they decide, you know, I want to make a plaque for my door. I want to make like last semester. Somebody did like a Christmas gift for whoever, you know, somebody wrote like a family, a parasito, I don't know, on the flag, but like a. Then you guys decide, you guys want to do something for that, like a, with that one. With the project for the for welding, I think that we're all going to do the same thing because. Uh, uh, 
last year, last year I allowed the students to decide. And it goes to work like a, you know, life gets busy and then everybody don't decide, you know. And then I got, so usually I just say, you know, let's just do all one. If you have an idea, you know, I really want to do this one thing. That's not forging knives because this is not a forging class. Because I, usually that idea always come up. You know, I know that's pretty cool. See the guy like hammering the thing. Okay, if we have an idea and we make it on the chat, does it matter what program we use? Like, we kind of have a you know, yeah, so the the reason why we use FreeCAD is because it's difficult. No, it's not the reason. <laughs> but like the reason why we use FreeCAD is because like a FreeCAD, we can we can actually push stuff through the command line to FreeCAD. It's it it like you guys are all taking a ENR two ten at this point. So like a last class, Terry was showing you how to pipe things through. I can actually pipe something into FreeCAD. I can pipe something into Fusion 360. So that's the reason why I do FreeCAD. You know, the it's an open source that like a works and and uh, we can actually pipe things in there and get the result from the other end and do something with it. Right. So like uh that's why we use the tools that we use, but the. Uh, but like if you say, you know, on the side, I want to use like a inventor. That's fine. Like a, a character knows more than I do about all these different tools. So like a, you can come and visit with him and say, you know, on the side after the class, I want to do this one project with like inventor. Then you like a, you can ask him to help you. But uh, yeah, we so you. The our point of view for pretty much everything is like uh, we encourage you guys to actually do all this kind of stuff. So you see people bringing like uh, things on their own, like uh, personal things on the trigger pointers. I'll rather allow the, the students to print like a smaller thing that they want to print on the trigger pointer and they learn how to use the trigger pointer rather than like uh, they never use it because nobody allowed them and now they get out with no skill, you know. So like uh, if you're not if if you're not abusing it, then why not? You know. And if you're not using while well, a student wants to use it for class purposes, then that's fine. But like uh, that's uh yeah, I think that's all for today. And unless you guys have any questions. And then the way that we're gonna do, if you look at the Should be open for So this is what we have, right? So today is the 24th. Could be Rodrigo writing about all this stuff. So now we're gonna have lab and lecture. So another one of these. And then we just go lab, 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 lab. You know, I don't know if we, if we're gonna move like a. We can move like a welding up here, and vertical mill, but like a, the general idea is like on Mondays we're always gonna have lab, and Wednesdays is when we do lectures. That's why today we had a lecture. Monday we had a lab. We didn't have the last week because Wednesday was we have some. All right, hey guys. Thank you.